face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, always welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better? Where this week we're gonna tackle Blossom versus Lillians. And the reason this is because they share a common trait starting actually in Ultra Sun and Moon, where Blossom got actually access to Quiver Dance itself. Lillian has been quite famous for being one of those Soul Grass type, one of the few who actually that can Quiver Dance, making a very unique setup sweeper. However, now with Blossom getting the same access to the same kind of strategy, I felt it's very, very fair to go over their stats, strats, and of course, work a theme to see which one of these two really are better. Because they do share the grass typing, and it's a very good defensive typing. And of course, with Quiver Dance in mind, which one of these two really are the superb setup sweeper for both, of course, the Smoke and Tears, but also the Lee concept. So, with that said, we're gonna cover, of course, Blossom first, and yeah, let's hit it off. So, Blossom has quite the history behind it, since actually Vaultum has always been, well, quite frankly, better between these two. Blossom has been somewhat forgotten and got a Fair revival, I would say, now in Ultra Sun and Moon, but as I said, Quiver Dance. That said, the grass typing itself is fairly defensive, resist electric grass, ground and water, but are weak to five types in bug, fire, flying, ice, and poison. So, usually a grass typing, while defensively fairly alright, is a typing that I think more often than not do need another secondary stab type of combined with it to kind of at least parry a few of the issues. That said, it is still, as I said, a good defensive typing. Now, when it comes to the stats of Blossom, it actually is fairly balanced with uh, one really plummeting stat you guys already see. Uh, the HP is 75, attack is 80, special attack is 90, and then the defenses are really high, actually. 95 and 100, representatively. And it's, as I said, it's really good for defensive typing to be bulky. That's, that's a strength, if anything. The speed tier is what's holding it back, it only is at 50, which makes it hard to Quiver Dance sweep, however it is defensive enough to go for Quiver Dance, so i say it's subjectively interesting, but as i say that 50 base speed is really low. Other than that, we actually have abilities that aren't necessarily helping it quite a lot, we have Chlorophyll which boosts the speed to be double during sun, uh, this isn't a chlorophyll sweeper, and I will not pretend that it is. Um, it can be used such as that, but that stated with Quiver Dance, there's really no reason to, and it just becomes a subpar version of that anyway. Uh, the other variant here is Healer. Healer is a good thing in, I would say, doubles, where that ability makes sure that your partner Pokemon can be healed for status with 50% chance after the turn ends. But however, the abilities doesn't necessarily help Blossoms in the singles, and instead a Chlorophyll, while being its best ability, isn't necessarily a usable ability in single format. But as you guys know, a Pokemon is only as good as its move pool allows it to, so even though the speed tier is kind of shifty and ability doesn't necessarily stand out, its move pool is where it starts to doing stuff and becomes interesting to talk about. We have Leaf Storm, Leaf Blade, Gidrain of course, Petal Blizzard, Petal Dance. And then when it comes to the TM move, the things that stands out here is that one of the few poison types that capitalize on Sludge Bomb, Walls of Energy Ball, we have a Festation, Grass Knot, um, nature, nature Power, which is great in terrain to get with Dazzling Gleam. Uh, also on the Egg Move side, where we have a few things that stands out. Uh, first and foremost, of course, with Synthesis, Charm. Those are really weird moves to get with Seer Dance, which is always unnecessarily and actually fairly viable if you think about it. But one thing that got in Ultra Sun and Moon, besides Quiver Dance, of course, is Strength Sap. Making sure, much like Valplume, to lower your opposing Pokémon's defense, uh, or I mean attack, while actually getting the same amount of attack that a Pokémon has back in HP. Which is really good, because that really means that you can go specially defensive to be able to capitalize on this kind of environment, which definitely helps Blossom quite a lot to fill a defensive role. When it comes to Mew Tutors overall, it doesn't necessarily learn a whole lot, but it has a few moves that are accessible. One of these is, of course, a stated Giga Drain. The other one is Drain Punch and Gastro Acid. Gastro Acid, of course, will ruin our opposing Pokemon's uh, ability, and I'll say that's always kind of nice. When it comes to pre evolution moves that are born with the Gloom, we have two moves that stand out that really are important. One of them is actually Drossy Train, which 
is usable, definitely helps out other processing Pokemon that could be weak to ground, for example, such as fire types that could be born with Blossom. The other one is the big one, and that is Moonblast, great filler move. Uh, basically ensures that you have a bit of broad variety. While Moonblast doesn't necessarily hit anything that threatens Blossom's typing-wise, it is a filler move that I think is viable, and it really helps out towards possible fighting types, which you naturally are. Or I should say, Valplum would have resisted, which of course Blossom isn't. So it does ensure to hit it a bit harder. Then again, Hidden Power will always be an accessibility to it. Another niche set here for um, Blossom is actually that due to um, Generation 1 and 2's shifting moves, we're talking about actually Generation 2 primarily, we get Curse. Curse is something that this Pokemon can use. Uh, it has a lot to do with it. We get accessibility to Petal Blizzard, Leaf Blade, and of course, not least, Drain Punch. Um, while we do lack the EQ, which I think is unfortunate, it is still a very, very viable move. I definitely say that Curse is better than using Capitalize on, for example, Sword Stance, which it also gets. Since Blossom already is slow, you're better to go bulky, and having a special defensive set with Curse is actually a viable option, mainly because Blossom's. Uh, Attack isn't necessarily so much worse than a special attack. However, I say that the ideal set for Blossom is the Quiver Dance variant with Giga Drain or Energy Ball to get it with Light of Sludge Bomb and then Hidden Power Fire, Ice, or where it feels you need or can capitalize on Moonlight. But overall, Blossom definitely is bulky enough to Quiver Dance and it's a very interesting Pokemon. Definitely feel that it's not as often used. I mean, it is a Pokemon that has Sleep Powder. It can do really nice stuff, but the typing is holding its back and it becomes somewhat forgotten. Even with the boost it got in this generation, I think people are sleeping on this Pokemon. And I really just gonna say that it is. It is a very, very dormant threat. It is just about the right matchup and Blossom can shine because it's definitely bulky enough to pull off a sweeping roll or a defensive roll quite right. So with Blossom covered, let's go into Lilligant. Now, Lilligant has, I would say, something that it's shared with Blossom. That is a fair shared bulk. While I would say Blossom is bulkier, it still has a fair amount of bulk, considering it's a grass type. We have 70 in its HP, both 75 in its defense and special defense. It is lower on attack, it's 60 there, which isn't necessarily usable at all, but its special attack is a lot higher at 110. And of course, the speed here is really a lot higher than Blossom at 90. That's 40 base between them. However, it isn't as bulky, but at the same time, it definitely makes sure that Blossom's idle set will always be Quiver Dance or anything that boosts its special attack higher. Overall, though, I'd say Lilligan's stats are definitely more threatening and definitely more focused on being a potential sweeper or setup sweeper and when it comes to its abilities i would say this it isn't as usable though they're still more usable than blossoms variant however i definitely would say none of these are necessarily that helpful chlorophyll for example this pokemon also isn't a sun sweeper should not be treated as such leaf guard makes sure you can't get status while the sun is going on same thing there, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. However, on tempo uh, ensures you can't get confused, which is kind of nice for Lilligan. It means that Pedal, um, pedal Dance, so the Pedal Blizzard, of course, Pedal Dance can't confuse you, like, much like Outrage, really, because that move works that you have two or three times 120 base power uh, to hit your opposing Pokemon, then you're confused. With on tempo, you do avoid that, which is probably what makes Lilligan. Slightly more better on the ability side because at least it has one ability that are usable. However, Lilligant has one massive flaw. And that flaw is actually quite a big one. It's actually the main reason Lilligant has always been irrelevant in the meta. I'll say that even though I'm fully aware of that Lilligant actually is a primary threat in PU as of this generation. But its main issue is its move pool. It is a really shallow move pool. Going over it a little bit here, we have Elite Seed, which is quite right, with Theater Iron Seed also, Quiver Dance as mentioned, Pill Dance and Blizzard, though as stated, not necessarily good physical Pokemon. Other than that, the usual set here are actually Hyper Beam, and then you have Energy Ball, you have Dream Eater and Nature Power. Besides that comes the Egg Slide. One thing that is good on this Pokemon is that it gets access to Healing Wish, 
uh, it does make it as an interesting scarf for to actually support your team with a healing wish and of course in ultrasonic moon it did get anchor and anchor is helpful because that means that you can set up more safely if you're producing pokemon is gonna try to tackle you it is an actually a fair chance of pulling that off that still though i would say that it come with a primary risk but it still is a great thing to get other than that when it comes to ultra sun and moon's mute tutors we get healing bell that are the only usable well move really and of course pre-evolution moves that should be stated here are leaf storm which is always an option to get it with sea crystal but overall that's actually it um the standard set of lilligant is actually sleep powder quiver dance sea dream eater and pedal dance that's usually the stat right stream uh, though you can see normal C with hyper beam but overall Lilligan's move pool is very, very shallow and very matchup dependent. So even though the stats I would say are superb to Blossom, I don't necessarily see Lilligan as a primary threat even to this generation because it just has so many matchups that deals with it properly and just can't, well, wall it since it actually doesn't get anything to respond besides, of course, hidden power. So what this matchup basically is going to end up being about is whether or not the extra moves on Blossom is more helpful. It's bulkier, it has, I would say, an interesting more variety with Strength Sap besides the Quiver Dance, which makes it more reliant to actually recover. Um, Lilligant on its own is defensively very, very capable and definitely are more a stated sweeper-ish to be able to set up a sweep by going for one Quiver Dance, possibly two, and be able to be unrivaled. But yeah, Blossom has the broader move pool. I I do believe it's a very big factor between these two. Blossom has potentially more sets due to Curse and um, yeah, Slush Bomb Moonblast are really, really, really fair moves. However, I'm going to be completely honest. I think that while Blossom, as stated, has the broader move pool, it isn't a primal threat turn one much like Ligand is. I think Blossom has the accessibility of being a better Quiver than Sweeper but as it stands, Lilligant, even with his flaws, is still with stats in mind a lot more scarier than Blossom. Which is why it's going to win this matchup. It has a lot to do with that the stat distribution just is better on Lilligant. Even though Blossom has the potential of doing better, its move pool isn't necessarily that much better. Let's say Blossom would have had Weather Ball, for example. Then I think it would have been up for debate, actually, because then it would actually had something that hit the Steel types. None of these are able to do just so. Both are born with hidden power. And if both are born to be walled by Steel types, then I'd rather take Lilligan's higher special attack to be able to deal with that properly, besides Blossom, who could potentially, without a Quiver Dance, actually be outspeeded by Steel type, making the setup idea just wasted. While it does have Drain Punch, I wouldn't say that it would be its ideal play to do because, as stated again, you will be slower and that's necessarily not the best thing. Lilligant is still a really, really strong Pokemon. It has massive flaws and I think these flaws need to be responded to appropriately. Um, as long as Lilligant has this lack of loss removal, it definitely will be not as good as it can be because there's nothing wrong with the stats behind that pokemon it is the move pool that should make it better and at this point it is the only thing that's holding it back at this well point so with that said i really wonder what you guys are thinking you know blossom as i said it got better strength sap is an interesting aspect and i want to try that out myself but it's very clear unfortunately that lilligan was made to quiver dance blossom is more of an afterthought and as long as the speedster is that low and nothing Really, when it comes to Moopal are broad, and I don't think can compete with Lilligan. I think it's a fair Pokemon to be competing with, but it's definitely not there. And I'm much rather would have seen Valpsum getting the Quiver Dance. I would believe that would have been a lot more scarier to see, uh, or at least give the gloom right. Um, had Valpsum got an accessibility, I think it would have been a lot more scarier than Lilligan. But that said, I mean, Lilligan is definitely not a bad Pokemon, but as I said, the Moo Pool doesn't allow it to be much better than it is today, and that's something that I feel is annoying because it was made for greatness, yet has been shoved aside for, well, becoming rather mediocre, and it, it stance definitely looks to be a lot better, so Lilligan should have gotten the chance to be a lot better. Um, and yeah, you know, with that said, thank you of course all for watching, and uh, join us next week for a really, really rock-hard matchup.